Hi everyone, Lisa here, aka Nike Milo, and welcome to Saturday Stash Dive. This is episode number four uh, for June 29th, 2013, and we are continuing our focus this month with 6x6 paper pads. So um, we've done three layouts with 6x6 uh, paper pads, so I thought to kind of switch things up a little bit, I thought we would make daybooks. A uh, perfect way to kind of incorporate 6x6 paper pads and 8x8 paper pads. And I really apologize in advance if, you know, you guys were looking for a layout. I just thought because it's travel season right now um, that the 6x6 paper pads would kind of fit in. And um, the only thing I could think of uh, for 6x6 paper pad for a layout was just taking what I've already done and just making a bit of a twist on it. Um, and I thought I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to kind of do something different. So I hope you guys forgive me. Um, this is not going to be a layout. It's actually going to be for making a day book. But um, again, day books are kind of all the rage right now, especially with travel season. So please forgive me. So anyway, we're going to jump right into it. And this is not going to be a sped up video. I'm just going to probably edit it in chunks. Uh, but uh, basically, we're just going to be doing this together, so it's an actual live one. And I don't mind switching it up every now and again, just to kind of give a little bit of flavor to uh, my videos. So with the 6x6 paper pads, what we're going to do is we're going to take our scoring board, and we're going to actually score it um, at 3 inches. And I've already done this, but I'm just going to kind of show you. Um, I'm sure everybody has a scoring board and probably knows how to do this, but I just thought, you know, if there's somebody out there who hasn't seen how to do this, let's let's do it all together, and that way everybody knows how to do it. So basically, you're just going to put your paper up in the corner, and you're going to take it at the three-inch mark, your little scoring blade, and this is the one that actually comes in the Martha Stewart scoring board. Um, and you're going to take it at three inches, and you're just going to score all the way down the paper, not really hard. You don't want to break the paper. You just want to make a little crease in there and then the paper will do the rest of the work. So the other thing you want I want to mention is um, there are some graphic designs that need to be kept um, top to bottom and you want to make sure when you put them up here you need to make sure your design is top to bottom. You don't want to switch it up like this because otherwise your design is going to look like that when we fold it in half. So make sure it's top to bottom, take it at the three inch mark and score it down. And then this is like a TV screen one so you, again you want to make sure you put it this way and I've already done this one and I've done this one as well. Um, then again for the 8x8 paper pads, this time we're going to score it at four inches as well and again I'm just going to put it up in the corner over here take it to the four inch mark and score straight down and again you want to make sure if you have a design that's very graphic especially like this Ferris wheel you want to make sure you have it from top to bottom and I've done um, all these ones as well and these are all um, it doesn't matter which way they go um, and this one, I liked it better like this than I did like this, so I kept it top to bottom like that. And then this one, again, I kept it top to bottom just because of the people on here. So again, we're just going to put it up in the top corner and just score it at the 4-inch mark. So now that we've done that, we're going to take all of our pieces. Well, actually, there is one more. I do have this uh, paper bag envelope. And I'm actually going to put it in here, and it uh, lines up with this 8-inch mark, so I'm actually scoring it at the 4-inch. So if you have a big paper bag um, and you want to add it and in, incorporate it in, the only thing you're going to need to remember is uh, to score it roughly in half. And because we're going to punch some holes in the middle here, you want to make sure that um, it's going to be covered up by most of the holes. Uh, we're going to come in probably about an inch on either side. So you want to make sure that you're going to have preferably at least two holes covered. Um, there's going to be three holes in here. So that, that's the only thing you want to make sure is that if you're going to put a paper bag in that you'll have. Um, like for example this one, 
I could put in here as long as um, I, I was covering up two holes. So that's why I'm not incorporating these plastic bags or these little glassine bags yet. Because I'm not sure what I need them to be at. So I'm going to start off with one piece of paper and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So this is how we scored it. We actually went down the four inch mark and we scored it like this. We're going to actually turn it this way. So we're going to turn it so that it's top to bottom. And we're going to come in at, actually, let's start with the six, the six by six. Sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. So this way I know what we need to be at. So you come in at the five inch mark and just follow it down until you get to your little mark and just pop your little hole in there. So again, we're going to come into the three inch mark, which is halfway. Just kind of guide it along. Don't score, just guide it. And then just pop the hole. You'll find it. You might have to go from left to right to find the hole and just pop it down. So we have one here, and we have one here. Now come down at the one inch mark. And it's going to be right about here. So we've got a hole here and a hole here and a hole here. So we have it roughly about one inch. So then the easiest thing to do, now that we've got that done, is I'm just going to use this piece of paper as a guide. So I'm going to take this piece of paper, this little punch here, this little pad I should say, and I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to know, I'm going to line up, line up those pieces. And I know this is roughly where I want it to be. And again, I'm just going to copy those holes. All right. So then we can just keep layering. Um, what I like to do is for this is I kind of like to do it in layers. So this is going to be my outside piece. This is going to be my next inside flap. So then that way I can kind of keep everything all straight. Oh, actually, I lied. I'm going to have to do this this way. Just line everything up again. I'm just come in here and pop holes. Okay. Actually, let's just do all of the eight by eights together and then all of the six by sixes together. And again, just make sure all of the papers line up. And just pop some holes. And you're just making sure you can see that they're right along the edge of that uh, of that score line. So again, I'm just making sure I put all my designs the right way. And then I'm just going to pop some holes in these. And then I'm going to come in here with this uh, paper bag. And I'm going to line it up with the score line. I'm going to have to flip it over this way. And then I'm just going to flip it over. And pop those little score lines or those little holes in there so you can kind of see I've got those holes in there and this is what we're using as a guide so this is not we, we're going to have to make these holes bigger but we're just going to use this as a guide for right now so then if I want to add this glass tinning bag I need to make sure that it's going to be on that seam line and I like to carry it over just a little bit just so that um, it's covered up by um, 
like it has a little bit of a flap on one side because otherwise it might get pulled out and I'm okay if it hangs over this six by six piece because it's going to add a little bit of layering to it so that's what I'm going to do with this piece here is I'm actually going to line it up to where I want it to be and actually I think I'm going to use some washi tape just to kind of keep it in place just because it keeps shifting as I move it over just because the glassine bag is really um, a smooth surface and it likes to kind of move around and then just flip that over and because the glassine bag um, can be uh, folded in half easily I'm not really concerned with um, uh, making a score line, but you certainly could. In fact, let's do that right now Just so I can show you guys uh, how to uh, Line it up after you've already had something that you know You've marked your holes, but you haven't actually scored it So my line or my little hole is right here. So all I'm going to do is take that little um, hole that I've punched and Just find a groove that it sits down in and then just score it so if you guys can see that so now I've scored that all right so I don't want to add too many of these I thought maybe I would just add one just for a different bit of a texture to it because I already have another pocket here and then these ones I want to use to decorate so we're going to leave those aside for right now so now here comes to the assembly part. It's easiest if you have a really, really long punch, like a hole punch, or if you have um, one of those corner chopper things. I don't, so you know what? Um, I don't know where mine went to, but I'm actually just going to take my piercing hole in here, and I'm just going to wiggle around and make it, um, a little bigger. Alright, so now we get to the assembly part of it. So, uh, this is what my cover wants to be, or what I want my cover to be. So I'm going to lay that down. Then I wanted this one. Okay, so the next thing you're going to need, and I forgot to mention this in the video, is if you can get a long needle, um, like a tapestry needle, is kind of perfect because it has a really big opening to it, so you can slip twine through it. Um, I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use this blue twine just because it matches really well with that. So I think I'm going to use this blue baker's twine. Make sure you get quite a bit. It's better to have too much than not enough in this case. Maybe one more. So that's probably, I don't know, maybe about 20 inches. And it's probably too much, but again, it's better to have too much than not enough. Um, so I find the easiest way to thread these is with these little, I don't know what you call it, needle threaders. I'm not sure what they're called. Then you just stick this through like that. And then it just comes through really easily. 
Okay, so I changed my mind. We're going to go like this. We're going to go through the middle ones. We have to come up to the bottom. So we have to come up through the bottom. I swear I've done this before. It's just been a long time since I've done it. So just come up through each one. Okay, so now you go down through the top and make sure you don't pull your bottom string out all the way through. You want to make sure you leave quite a bit of a tail because you, this is what we're going to tie to. So you want to make sure you have, um, like again, but more is better for sure. So then we're going to go through each of these pieces. Okay. Flip it over. I'm just going to flip through and make sure I have it through each top hole just so to make sure I didn't miss any. And no, I didn't. Okay. So that's good. And then we're going to flip it over this way. We're going to come down this one again. I know, scary, but you can do it. And then we're going to come through the top, or the middle, <laughs> middle, top, and then we're going to come up through the bottom ones. Just keep wiggling it, it'll come, and then, then we come up to here, and then we tie the knot. I believe I did it different the other way, but that's okay. And then just make sure I don't have it quite tight. Something's a little loose here, so just make sure you get it a little snugger than where I have it right now. I don't have it very snug at all. Just make sure you get it snugger. Again, I didn't really have it very snug. So now we have it snug. So you can see I don't have any um, twine here that's loose. And this is all nice and snug up in here. And then we're just going to come to the middle and we're going to tie a knot. You could tie a bow if you like. Um, I would suggest tying it in a knot first and then maybe a bow um, just because um, you want it to be so very secure. All right. So then you can see I have a bit of a piece here that's not quite even. 
And then, of course, I'm going to have some here at the bottom that aren't quite even. If you have a really, really strong trimmer, um, now is where I would suggest you could come in and trim all the sides up. Um, if you don't have a really strong trimmer, and if you're super, super careful, um, just take your ruler and just line it up with this edge and just come along with an X-Acto knife and just tr keep trimming until you get through all the layers. And again, like my sides aren't quite even, so again, you can just come in, line up your uh, X-Acto knife and just um, snip off um, the excess over here. I have a really strong paper trimmer, so I'm just going to do that and I'll be right back. Alright, so I have all my edges lined up nice and square. When we fold the book over, we might have to trim up again, um, but at least they're nice and square right now. So then all you have to do is just go over, and if you want, you can get your bone folder. So I'll just grab that here. And then just go over the edges as you're folding it. So you can see that I'm not lined up quite on this side. So again, you could go with your paper trimmer. If you don't have a strong paper trimmer, you could definitely go with an X-Acto knife. I'm not sure if mine is going to um, line up that great um, or cut through all that. I'm going to give it a shot. If not, I will um, do it with an X-Acto knife, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what we have right now. It's really, really thick, um, but it has uh, different elements in it. Um, you could definitely add less pages if you so choose, just for, you know, something smaller. Uh, but it does have um, some different elements in it, but very easy to do. And then here's where you can start decorating up the pages and adding... Um, some pockets to them. Um, I was just going to show you uh, this one here. We have, like, this was this paper bag, and then there's this pocket here. But because I knew I was going to have to trim off some excess, now I have a pocket on this side as well. So you can see it's very versatile. Like, one of these, pa one of these little books is very easy to put together. So um, now that I've showed you how to put the book together, I think I'm going to go ahead and start decorating this one up so you can kind of see what you can get with this. So I guess I should also mention that the finished size of this is about four and three quarter uh, by about seven and three quarter. So I only had to trim off about a quarter of an inch off of each side. Well, I guess quarter of an inch off of this side and then a quarter inch off of the top. So um, it works out to be a really nice size book. Um, you could easily put, uh, put Instagram pictures in here. I don't think you'd be able to fit four by six pictures in here. Um, but it's definitely like you can fit your, um, Instagrams, your, um, in, uh, two by twos or what's the other thing? The Instax photos. Those could go in here easily as well. So I think I'm going to fast forward this part and just kind of show you some of the things that I've done and I'll come back at the end.
So um, I'm finished putting, embellishing the book. So this is what it looks like. And I just copied um, this stamp set. Where did it go? And it says, uh, go see view. So I copied that. And then I just put 2013 on it. And then um, to embellish it, I added an envelope here, added some pockets, or added some stamping, I'm sorry. And then added this library pocket over here, and then added some stamping there, another po uh, envelope pocket. And I left a lot of uh, the pages blank just because um, I'm not sure how they're going to be embellished right now. Um, again, one of those glassine bags. Another envelope, and this little flap here you could attach a picture to so that it kind of like flaps back and forth. So that's what it looks like there. So again, um, I just left it pretty simple as to right now, um, but certainly you could add more to it or less to it. You wouldn't have to have it quite so chunky. Um, I added quite a bit of four by or sorry, eight by eight pages, so it did chunk it up quite a bit. You could definitely add less, that's for sure. So I thought to remedy how it was so chunky is I have some um, twill twine or twine or uh, ribbon. I'm sorry. So I thought I could just tie it with this, and this is from close to my heart, and it's uh, colonial white, I believe is the color. I'm not even sure if they still have it anymore. So. Um, Again, I'm just tying a bow to keep it secure. And I'm just leaving it long so that, you know, if I ever need to tie it again, it's all fine. So there you go. There's your day book. So thanks everybody for watching and stay tuned next week for another Saturday stash dive. And we will have a new focus and you will know what that is really soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.